Welcome back to All The Gear. Today on All The Gear, I'm gonna be teaching you how to brew this. This is my homegrown ginger, homemade ginger beer recipe. I'm gonna be taking you on a journey through brewing, kegging, using sugar and citric acid to balance. I'm gonna time lapse the brew as well as show you the yeasts in action underneath a microscope. I'm gonna show you what spices to use and we're going to also test our brew on an uncontrolled sample audience. Okay, so on my other channel, Huchos, I have recently created a perpetual ginger system that will keep making me excessive amounts of ginger year on year. This is only part of the harvest from this year, and this video is tackling that problem. So I'm definitely not going to be stingy with the ginger in the making of this ginger beer. In fact, it's probably the highest amount of ginger you will see in any ginger beer across the web because I am not paying for ginger. I am trying to utilize a resource that I have an excess quantity of. I want to make the most delicious ginger beer with the most ginger possible and I'm going to bring you along for the ride. So in this video, we'll be creating bulk quantities which we will then keg. The reason I am kegging is because I am lazy and I do not like the bottling process. I want to make a large batch, keg it and then have it on hand for the foreseeable future. Now the coolest thing to do here would be to make a ginger bug. However, I want to give you the same result that I'm going to get. So to give us the consistency we need, we will be using a brewer's yeast. This is EC118 and it is a wine brewer's yeast. This is the yeast I'll be using. There's no need to do a starter culture for this ginger beer. If you like, you can definitely make your own ginger bug and start from there. So I'm gonna wash the ginger and weigh it. I will be using five kilograms of ginger. That is, <laughs> this is gonna be a tasty ginger beer. I'm gonna wash that ginger and we're gonna slice it up. I'm gonna use the slicing attachment for the food processor. Now this was actually all hydroponic ginger. So there's no dirt on here to wash off, it's all cocoa. So this is really clean anyway. I do wanna get the cocoa off. And look, I know there's gonna be people saying in the comments, ginger is $50 a kilogram. You've just made a $250 ginger beer. Yep. And I show you how to grow it cheaply in my other video as well. So I am giving you the tools to grow this as well. Remember that. So using a food processor, a food slicer, whatever you've got, we're going to grate up this ginger. And I'm gonna do that for the rest of the ginger. And that's five kilos. So much. All sliced up. I meant to add three kilos of sugar to that. I don't think I'm gonna fit three kilos of sugar in that. I don't even think I'm gonna fit the water in that. I'm gonna try not to be ridiculous. Okay, so that's about half in there now. And here I have three kilos of raw sugar. 1.5 in each. And to this, I can add water. I want about 19 liters of liquid to come off this because I'm gonna be kegging it into 19 liter corny kegs. So I need 19 liters of liquid between these batches because this will be strained off at the end. So I'm going to fill up the first type of fermenter that I'll be using to 19 liters. We can just pour our water. This is hot water too. So I've given it a bit of a head start. Turn on our hot plate. And because I'm quite impatient, I'm gonna do two at once. So I'm gonna leave those heating up until they get to a low simmer. Now, while you're waiting for that to boil, this is probably the time to start emptying your last kegs. So fill yourself a beer and enjoy the rest of all the gear. Hmm. <laughs> this is an incredible smell. This is gonna be delicious. Okay, we've got them to a simmer. 
I'm gonna simmer them for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna leave them to cool down to room temperature. Okay, so we can put those aside. And now we get to customize our spices. So this is entirely up to taste. I'm gonna show you what I'm spicing my ginger beer with and you can spice with whatever you like. Copy, rearrange, change, whatever you feel. 1.3. <clears throat> okay, so I'll be using today uh, eight grams of cardamom pods, approximately 60 pods, 15 star anise, which is approximately 12.5 grams, five grams worth of peppercorns, which is 150, and 15 cloves, which is 1.6 grams. Now I'll have all the breakdowns of these per liter in the description. And we're gonna take that. We are going to crush the spices. Looks about right. Adding it into this. This is just a hot bomb. You can just add this straight into your ginger if you like. We're gonna be straining it off anyway, but I just wanna be able to remove it if I think the flavors are getting too strong. Oh, <laughs> that smells incredible. As it should. I know you hear this all the time, but like, I just wish you could smell what I'm smelling. Oh well, uh, you just have to make it yourself. As well as this, we are going to be chopping up one jalapeno. And while this is finishing up the boil, just gonna add that chopped jalapeno into the top. Now, if I were to do this again, I would have actually boiled the spices with the ginger because the beer didn't end up carrying as many of the spice notes through as I would have liked. Okay, so it's been 24 hours and our brew is now room temperature. Oh, that is like, it's like a gingery caramel. There is a hint of that jalapeno in that one. I can actually, yeah. Wow. There's some spice from the jalapeno because that was the one with jalapenos in it. There's a lot of spice from the ginger. There's a difference, full tongue spice and the jalapeno is like an outer tongue spice. There's, it's so sweet, like there's a lot of sugar in it. So now it is time to ferment. For most people, you will probably be working with a fermenter that looks something like this. Now this is absolutely fine. However, I'll be using a different style of fermenter for two reasons. One, because Kegland has supplied it for me and I'm really excited to try it out. And two is because you will be able to see the fermentation in action. This is the Firmzilla 30 liter fermenter and it is a pressurized vessel. Uh, while I'm playing with this, all of this is available on the Kegland website. Pretty much all of the brew equipment, all of the supplies that we're about to use, like the yeast and everything. So head over there and check it out if you're interested. This is why I want to use it. Look at that. We will be able to see the entire brew. The top has this specialized lid where you have a pressure release valve and you can add in different connections. So you can actually use this as a keg as well as a fermenter, which is fantastic because I love everything multi-purpose. The way that this works, so this can go up to a maximum pressure of 35 PSI. Liquid temperatures up to 55 degrees Celsius, so you don't wanna pour your boiling hot liquid into this. And we have an air lock as well. That is the air lock. And that will just press into our lid like so. This is a more traditional airlock, add in our handles. So I'm just gonna do a quick sanitize and then we can fill up our fermenter. From now on, assume that everything that I use is sanitized. So now we're gonna move our liquid from our room temperature pots to our fermentation vessel. Because the Firmzilla has a narrow neck, I'm gonna be using a sanitized jug to ladle our ginger mash out. There's so much ginger. <laughs> it's gonna be incredible. Okay. So that is all of our ginger and we are at 15 liters. At the start of all of this, I measured out 19 liters into this second fermenter and I've been using this water for the ginger brew. And that means that 
whatever's left in this is the amount that I need to make up to 19 liters once the ginger is strained out. This was hot water, so it is pre-sterilized. I can just use this water to wash out my pots, get whatever ginger's left in them. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my spice ball. And before I add the last of the water, I'm actually going to pitch the yeast. Here I have a yeast nutrient. I'm not gonna use the full 100 grams. I'm only using about 10 grams. This is essentially just dry, dead yeast hulls. And this gives the living yeast that we're going to add a nutrient source to grow and metabolize all of our delicious sugars into alcohol and complex flavor compounds. And we'll be using this yeast. This is the EC118. It is a wine yeast and it will be doing all of the work to metabolize our sugars into alcohol. I need 10 grams of the yeast nutrient. And I'm also going to pitch two packets of the yeast, like so. I'm gonna fill it up with the rest of the water. And I'm gonna pitch the other on top. You can literally just pitch one on top like this. That will be absolutely fine as well. I just wanted to get the yeast throughout to speed the process up a little. We can then add on the airlock and the seal and screw the lid down. Also want to take a specific gravity reading. Obviously better to do before you add it into the fermenter. I'm going to mix up my fermenter, get some liquid out, put it into my volumetric flask. We can drop in 1.05. And we make sure we write that down like so. Pop the lid back on. We give it a taste. Too sweet, but that will change. And now we can start the time lapse. So it's only been a day and you can already see the fermentation happening throughout the vessel. On top, we've got bubbles of CO2 forming and it would have by now forced out the oxygen in the top of the container. The yeast is doing its job. That big stir that I gave it would have dispersed the yeast throughout the ferment. If we look up close, you can see the bubbles forming all the way from the base of the container and coming up through. There was a line of water not mixing where I added water and the line would have been the difference in the weight of the water because some of the water had sugar molecules dissolved in it and the sugar molecules would have made the water heavier and there would have been a distinct line. Now, because we've got so much activity and the diffusion of the sugar between the two layers would have happened, we no longer have that line. And we're also starting to see some of the ginger float to the top of the vessel as well. This is a beautiful result. I'm seeing exactly what I wanted to see in the first day, and we've got a really good reaction from our yeast, which means that it's nice and healthy, and hopefully we're gonna get a really tasty result. And because you're watching a YouTube channel called All The Gear No Idea, we are going to put some of this yeast under a microscope. Now this is a digital video capable microscope, and I'm gonna take a sample of the yeast and we're gonna put it onto a scientific slide and have a look at what is actually going on in our beer. We'll grab some slides like so. I'll also grab a pipette like that. Pop, ooh, it's not gonna be long enough. I think I'm gonna to have to crack the top though. The carbon dioxide and alcohol should be killing anything that's in there if I do let anything in. So, can't see this being a problem really. Sealed nicely. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a quick sample. Don't need much at all. Have a look. And that is yeasts, little yeasts within our ferment doing all the work. On the left, you can see a bubble and it's actually moving. Let me show you. 
Okay, this is pretty cool. So this is a carbon dioxide bubble and you can see the bubble getting bigger as the yeast are metabolizing. That's the edge of the slide there. Look at that. What's happening is once there's too much carbon dioxide to be dissolved in the water, the carbon dioxide will form a bubble and the bubble will then get bigger until it can escape. Just like is happening over here, we're getting the bubbles rising to the surface. But here, there's nowhere for the bubble to escape to. So it's just getting larger between the glass and pushing out through the path of least resistance, which is obviously going to be the side of the slide itself. We've got the side of the slide here. It's just pushing its way to the edge. And you can see all around it, that is, that is the yeasts. Here we go. About to reach the edge. There it is. <laughs> that was so satisfying. I don't know why. You can see the bubble has now reduced in size. Now I have no idea whether that was educational or not, but it was definitely a lot of fun for me. <laughs> Let's get back to the ferment. So it's been eight days since I started this ferment and it's looking really good. I wanna measure the gravity of the ginger beer to make sure that it's fully fermented. And even if it's not, we'll at least know the alcohol content and then we can decide whether we wanna to move to the next step. So it turns out having a lab is quite handy. <laughs> Give this a spray with some 70%, sterilize it. We should have a high alcohol content, so it really shouldn't matter. Drop in, ooh, wow. Okay, that's dropped a lot. We are at 095. That means, let's do the calculation. <laughs> Subtract this number from that number, and we get 13.125. 13%. If this is 13%, that's ridiculous, but I actually think that this is probably giving a top of the fermenter reading. Let me give it a bit of a try. Here I have a glass with ice. I apologize for the sound that you can hear. That is actually rain. And um, because I'm in Australia, we exclusively have tin roofs. Give it a go, I guess. This is not the end product. I'm just very interested. Doesn't that look amazing? Looks pretty good to me. Let's give it a go. Oh, that is very alcoholic. It's gonna need to be back sweetened. It needs something. Okay, how do I describe that? Very alcoholic, it has the perfect spiciness. It's got that like, it's got spice, but it's not what I was expecting. It's empty, kind of, without the sweetness. There's no sweetness at all. It's almost like a, a very alcoholic, ginger kombucha. I wouldn't drink that. It needs something. We're going to have to back sweeten this. We're going to add in sugar and citric acid and that is going to give us a nice rounded flavor. I don't think this needs to be fermented any longer. It is all the sugars have been completely fermented. We're going to strain it into a, another fermenter and we're going to cold crash it. So to do this, this fermenter actually makes it quite easy to do if it works out the way that I am hoping that it's gonna work out. These are just brew bags, right? You just use them to strain out your hops. If I drop it into our fermenter, I'm hoping that I'll just be able to screw our lid on over the top of it, like so. I have a clean fermenter here. This is either gonna work or be a complete disaster. This is working wonderfully. How good. Making sure my hands are disinfected with alcohol. And I'm just going to whoop, squeeze out as much of that ginger beer as possible. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, the bag floated. <laughs> How good. Come on, get in there. There we go. All right, what are we up to? We've got 17 liters. I'm actually pretty okay with that. That's all the ginger. Give this a bit of a try. That's what I wanted. There's no sweetness left in that ginger. 
There's actually not much taste at all left in it, which is good. That means it's all in there. We're gonna do another test. I don't trust that first test. You can fill it up and you can see how it's mixed up now. And we can drop in our measuring instrument. That's more like it. So we're at 1005 rather than 0.095. Not that, 1005. We do a quick calculation. It's 5.9. 5.9%. Now we'll do another test at the end once all the yeast has dropped out of it, but I think it's about 6%. And you know what that means? It means it probably tastes a little different and it's gonna taste yeasty as all hell. Definitely different. Less strong in alcohol, which is good because I didn't, I really didn't want it to be that strong. A lot more flavors. A lot more ginger. Oh, there's definitely some just rogue yeast cells and dead yeast cells in there. I can taste the muddiness of it. But once that muddiness has dropped, once all of the yeast cells go into their hibernation, they pull everything in the liquid down and cause that cold crash, I am super excited for how this is gonna turn out. So let's throw it in the fridge. I'll throw a bubbler in it and we can leave it overnight. Come on. For the cold crash, I would definitely recommend leaving it longer than I did, longer than that 24 hour period. You can see the line in the base of the fermenter where the yeast is. And I'm trying not to stir them up too much. From here, we're going to amend the ginger beer with sugar and citric acid. However, I wanna make sure that I'm not getting any of that yeast. I'm going to siphon it into the upper fermenter quickly. In hindsight, I could have just siphoned this directly into the keg. Now, once I've figured out how much citric acid and sugar that I need, I, you won't need to do this step. The only reason I'm doing it is because I need to mix up the ginger beer so that I have a consistent flavor that I can amend with our citric acid and sugar. The rest is yeast. I'll give you a look inside. That is all the yeast. There is a thick layer too. You can see how much yeast there is. I probably could have let that cold crash longer, but we're here now and we are so close to the end product. We have 14 liters in the fermenter. Going to ladle out a liter. It is cold. And I'm gonna split that liter between four jars. So each of these jars is about 250 mils and we can give it a go. Ooh, that's good. There's way less, it's not muddy anymore. There, a little bit of yeast will drop out of that though. It's got spice, both types of spice. So it's got that full body ginger spice, like that full tongue spice. It's got the bite of the jalapeno, but it's still empty of sugar. There needs a little bit of balance, but I could drink that. Yeah. Okay, from here, we are going to be adding sugar and citric acid in different concentration. From the research I did online, the ideal amount of citric acid is about two grams per liter. At least that's what they use in commercial soft drinks. The ideal amount of sugar is between 120 grams per liter or 60 grams per liter. I'm going to be trying the citric acid first because if I'm happy with the way that the citric acid balances it, I can then move on to four different strengths of sugar essentially. We are going to measure out two grams of citric acid. Because we've got 250 mils, we're only doing a half gram. There's actually bubbles forming on the top. Half gram of citric acid. Ooh, it's definitely brought something out in it. There's way more. There's way more to that now. That's quite interesting. It's less flat. The taste sort of, that's not exciting. That's more exciting. I don't know how to explain that. Maybe it's given it some kind of familiarity. So <clears throat> that's definitely better. Let's start with the low quantity of sugar with the citric acid and the non-citric acid. 15 grams of sugar, sucrose. That's a lot of sugar. Is it really? Okay. Now I should say, if you're bottling 
this is not a good idea because you are adding in monstrous amounts of sugar and you're going to have your ginger beer explode. Since I'm kegging, the fermentation will stop because it's going straight into a refrigerator and I'll be able to let off the gas if it does. For our op other options, there's lactose, which is another type of sweetener, and you have all of the artificial sweeteners like stevia and stuff as well. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. That's why I love kegging. <laughs> well, one of the reasons. Mostly laziness. Mix that up. This just looks lovely, like look at that. The bubbles hold in this one, whereas this is this one without the citric, there's no foam. It's almost carbonation, isn't it? Be interesting to try the difference. And you know what? I'm gonna try without the citric acid first. Because I feel like I feel like this is gonna be the one. I mean, it just looks right. This looks flat. It looks more like a juice. Oh, yeah. We are at ginger beer, my friends. We are at ginger beer. All of this time, we have made it. This is delicious and I would definitely be able to drink this. In fact, I would choose to drink it over some of my other ferments, but we're not there yet. We're, we're, just, we're, like, we're like a hair away. I'm glad I started low on the sugar. I don't think it needs any more sugar than that. The recipe I was looking at was saying that between 60 and 120 grams of sugar a liter. This is the 60 grams per liter. I'm going to try the higher sugar quantity because I just need to double, double what's in that really. But I think that's sweet enough for me. Okay. The citric acid at two grams per liter with the sugar at 60 grams per liter. Here we go. I just, I just got tingles. I am stoked with that. It's got the, the freshest ginger taste that I've had with a ginger beer that tastes like a modern ginger beer. Like, I'm not calling this traditional by any stretch. This is a modern ginger beer. It's even bubbling like a modern ginger beer. See, I, I'm actually stoked with this. It's got complexity. It's spicy. It's not sessionable. Definitely not sessionable. We've done it. Pack up, we can go home. <laughs> that is really nice. I might even suggest that we go sweeter on it. That is what I call, it's not dry, but it's not like a lolly drink. That's probably where I want it to be. But for science, we must try more sugar. <laughs> probably my dopamine shortcutting my logic and going, oh yeah, just, just put more sugar in it. Now I'm abandoning the no citric acid route. Now you can use lemons instead. There is absolutely no reason why you can't use lemon juice. Problem is I can't quantify it for you. You'll be reading threads online, but the lemon you use will be different to their lemon. This I can quantify. It seems like a lot of sugar, hey. It is a lot of sugar. I mean, you read these things on the back of your soft drink, but you don't really understand it until you tip it into a liquid, do you? It's really hard to explain what this citric acid is doing. This is high in sugar. This is not 15, it is 40 grams, but that's actually 120 grams per liter. So at 13 liters that we have right now, just over one and a half kilos of sugar I'd have to add to this if we were to go with this one, but we'll see. Now that's delicious. Now that's delicious. It's so sweet that it's, Oh no, I like them both. I hate myself for this, but I like, that is incredible. Wow. We're going with the sweet. <laughs> that is incredible. It, it retains all of the previous flavors. It's so spicy. I don't even know what this means. It's perfectly balanced. And it has that sugar kick that you just want. Now, I actually think I could session that. I probably sound like a sweet tooth. I'm not actually a sweet tooth. Much prefer, I'm an umami guy, but this, that's next level. Let me just, cause that's, that's what we're going with. Let me just sit on this. Oh, it's delicious. I don't know why, 
that tastes greener. It tastes less developed. This has taken something that tastes more like a ginger wine and turned it into a ginger beer. It's taken away. Now that I'm tasting this again, there's some unwanted flavor in there somewhere. It tastes like green ginger, but this has completely eliminated it. I don't know, it tastes like this is almost, there's a distinct taste to a green beer. This has almost got it, but this doesn't. And I don't know why. We're going with the higher sugar. 120 grams per liter, which is fine. That's only 1.5 kilograms of sugar. Oh, pardon me. This is fun. I could do this for a living. Send me your requests. What do you want? What do you want to see me make? Because I'll make it. So now that I've figured out the recipe I want to go with, which is our 120 grams per liter of sugar and the two grams per liter of citric acid, I'm going to add in 1.5 kilos straight into our fermenter. No, I'm not. I'm gonna put it in the keg first. So you can actually use this as a keg. However, I won't be because this is going up to my top beer fridge and it will not fit in my top beer fridge. In the future, we're actually going to do a ferment with this. This is actually a pressure fermentation vessel. So you can ferment beers under pressure, which means that you get a cleaner taste and you also retain the aromas of the ferment a lot better than in normal fermentation scenarios. So I'm gonna pour my ginger beer into my keg. And we can add in our sugar and our citric acid. Two grams per liter and it was 13 liters. That's only 26 grams. Put it on the little scales. That's it. That's all the citric acid we'll be using. Put that in there as well. Close up our keg and we can gas it. And one thing I just forgot to do is to test the gravity and we can't do it anymore because it's got the sugar in it. So we're gonna have to assume that the 5.9% is the correct amount of alcohol and I can testify to that after drinking one glass of it. Okay, so I'm now going to carbonate my keg. I haven't mixed in the sugar yet or the citric acid. Not that it affects ginger beer, but I'm gonna get the oxygen out, fill it with carbon dioxide and that way the keg is completely sealed at, at 10 to 15 PSI and I can shake it about with our sugar and citric acid in there. So I'm going to connect up my keg, which needs new seals apparently. Apparently I'm gonna replace the seals first. I'm gonna connect up my carbon dioxide, which is this bottle here, and I'm going to pressurize it to 15 PSI. So. and I'm gonna let all of the air out of the keg and make sure we're at about 13 to 15 PSI. And because that's cold, it's going to carbonate quicker because at colder temperatures, liquid has a greater affinity for carbon dioxide. Now you can force carbonate this, which is probably gonna happen when I mix up the sugar and the citric acid. I'm going to disconnect my carbonation source. You can use any carbonation source. It doesn't necessarily need to be a full seven and a half kilo bottle. It could be a carbonation charge if you like. However, these are more expensive to run. We're gonna disconnect our carbon dioxide and shake my keg. I want to get that the citric acid and the sugar mixed into my ginger beer. And then we're going to put it into our fridge with our carbon dioxide and we can leave it to carbonate overnight. It's either been 24 hours or I just changed my shirt. I couldn't wait. I'm going to have one now. I've even got a lime on hand because YouTube is a visual medium. So here it goes. That, that was worth it. And I honestly didn't know if I'd be able to say that at the end of this video. That is worth it. It's everything I wanted. It's already got bubbles. And tomorrow we'll have more bubbles. And because ginger beer is obviously best served shared, I'm gonna be taking some ginger beer to a party that I'm going to, and we're gonna see what other people think. I'm just using pet soda bottles to bottle it out of the keg.
So can I finish what I'm eating first? No. So this has got five kilos of ginger with a whole ferment in it. And how many litres is the ferment itself? It's, a, it's about 20 litres. So there's five kilos in 20 litres. Yeah. Let me know how it tastes. It's got yeah, chili, yeah, it's got yeah, a whole yeah, lot yeah. of like spices it's in it. And it's proper ginger beer. It's not like loose. Yeah. This is the cheapest way to do this. Yeah. Great. It's nice. I'm it's, um, you can definitely really taste hints of chili. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the it's it's quite gingery. Yeah. It's not very, um, <laughs> like, sodery. No, if that uh, makes sense, yeah, yeah. it's not. It's not, it's not extremely sparkly. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of ginger beer that I've had is quite fizzy. Yeah, yeah. This isn't very fizzy. Yeah. So it's six percent. Six percent. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, they actually all combine really well. Think is goes, it too sweet? No, it's not at all. Yeah, not yeah, at all. Not? And I'm not a, I, I, I don't hate like sweet, sweet drinks. drinks so yeah. I would have just gone. Oh, that was great. Because no. there's actually 120 grams of sugar per liter. Which is ridiculous, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like a dry drink. So okay, cool. if it's too sweet, I'd just be like, oh. Me too. I like a dry drink. Yeah. Oh, no, nice. I really like that. That's um, dangerous. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just leave that in front of you. <laughs> it's very rooty. It's very rooty. <laughs> it's very rooty. <laughs> Alex, Ali, you can't take the she is it's actually, it's actually a rhizome. <laughs> Mm. Quite nice. That's gingery. Yeah. Yeah. Not too sweet. Not too sweet. And it's got a little bit of a spice to it. Yeah, it elevates okay. it a bit, you know. So, it's not like red chili. It's no. more of like a, a, a zingy chili. Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, very nice. This very is nice. like a perfect Sunday afternoon. We're just having a 35 degrees. I do beers. think it could deal with a little bit more fizz. I agree. Okay, I've yeah. undercarbonated. I yeah, think yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is this the one with the jalapeno in it? Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> It smells like a burn your ass in half. I have said a taste of it. You're driving home. That's really good, man. Dad? Jimmy, come on. What's this? Ginger beer. No, what the fuck is it? What is it? Ginger beer. He's very skeptical of me because I always fuck with him. But. This, Jimmy, this, I made this ginger beer with love. It's, mm. it's got five kilograms of ginger in it. All right. Sugar and a lot of other good stuff. Probably one of the or most authentic ginger beers you've ever tried. So give me a review. Uh, you go first. I'm not fucking with you. What percentage are you talking? It's 6%. Is it? Yeah. It tastes very beery. Beery? Yeah. Okay. Like, like yeasty? Ye uh, yeah, it is actually, it, it is vegan. TBC. Te technically, is yeast it? is a fungus. Can we, can we just check on that before we release this? <laughs> not very good. It's good? Yeah. I like it. It's good. Yeah, it's yours. I don't know if it's piss or not. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it fun, it's a fun line. It is a fine line. Our friendship is a fine line. <laughs> no worries. TV on the news then. Watson, do you want it? It smells good. Honest feedback, not, not bullshit. It's not like a ginger beer I've ever had before. No. Very different. Fizzy. Probably, probably, yeah, it's not as fizzy. Okay, so I need to carbonate it. That, no, I need but that's to not a bad it. thing. You reckon? Okay. No, because sometimes too much carbonation, yeah, yeah, yeah. reflux, all kinds of bad yeah. things. So it's so not too spicy? It's not too spicy. Okay, good. I'd probably only be able to drink one. Yeah, it's not sessionable. But it's, it's not. It's good yeah? flavours in it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> it has a good aftertaste. It's not just That's like, good because yeah. a lot of gingers don't. Yeah. And there it is. That is the all the gear guide to how to make ginger beer. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of all the gear and I hope I left you with some more of an idea. There's a frog in here. Oh, I didn't mean that to rhyme either. It's in the wall. It won't be long before I have to make more of that. 